Good morning, everybody. It's Positive Tuesday and National Ben's Day today. I think you made that up. March 7th, 2023. No, I saw that this morning. I was looking for a, a national day or something to add. I didn't, didn't even know. That's a thing. <laughs> How awesome is that? It's National Ben's Day today. So, uh, sure For Baron County Chair, what? <laughs> Make sure you tell Derusa. Oh, I didn't before she left. I'll text her. Don't worry. For Bear <laughs> County Sheriff Chris Fitzgerald, I'm Ben Dryden. And of course, you're watching Positive Tuesday with Ben and Fitzy, presented by Professional Exteriors and Interiors. With nearly 20 years of experience, this locally owned and operated business has provided quality work both on the inside and on the outside of your home or business. Like Fitzy and I, they believe that it's the little things that make a big difference. Give Brian a call today. Phone number is right there on the screen, 715-520-520. 2271. We are streaming this week's show on our Dryden Wires Facebook page and on our YouTube channel. Uh, we're holding off on the uh, Twitter thing. There's some issues there. Uh, but however you may be watching, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Fitzy, good morning. How are you? Good. Great sunny Tuesday. It's warm. Er. And Dirk, you don't have to kiss up. Damn. Yes. We put your weather ben. forecast It was weird. I put on my Facebook page this morning, more just kind of joking. Like, that shouldn't even be a thing, by the way. National <laughs> Benson. That's silly. Um, and people were saying, you know, kind of like congratulations and have a great. I'm like, I, I'm not doing anything. <laughs> Didn't even know it was a thing. It's just Tuesday. It's just Tuesday. <laughs> Every day's a Ben day in my That's life. That's what I think. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, how was your weekend? It was awesome. <laughs> I mean, I what? Had, uh, yeah. I mean, um, yeah. Jace, uh, we went and played hockey. We weren't supposed to win. We were underdogs in both games, came on on top. Um, they're moving on this weekend. We got to go down to Chicago and play now. And it's, yeah, the Madison Capitals weren't supposed to beat Team Wisconsin. They did. Jace ended up getting the overtime shootout game winner. Our goalie stopped every shot they could do. Um, it was it was great. Good team effort um, for a team, and it was uh, pretty exciting to watch them beat a team. I mean, no one knows this, but Jace played Team Wisconsin for a year or two years as an alternate and didn't make the team the last couple of years. And it's nice to stick it to a team that <laughs> – It just – as a parent. Yeah, you're totally <laughs> like, yeah. Mm, really? Wasn't very good for you, huh? How's that working out for you? Yeah. I mean – but they played. It's a team effort. Obviously, it wasn't because no, it's it was all just, Jace. Come on, you're a parent. Yeah, now, you could say it. that, what you know, as a politician or if it's Jace, it's a team effort. Today. But no, as a parent, no, you don't have to say that. Oh no, I do. Our goalie was unstoppable. I mean, they outshot us two to one, and uh, yeah, we we played hard. We played good. It was it was just fun. It was just good to see. It was good for the team. Um, so one more, one more week of hockey. Pretty soon we won't have nothing to talk about if I don't have any. Time. <laughs> There's no press week? releases and hockey will be over. Yeah. So I'll we'll probably have to cancel the show for a couple of weeks. <laughs> yeah. You know, by the way, pre you know what? I'm going to write that down. Okay. I have not seen a lot. I mean, for you, for the sheriff's right. office, because you're very open, transparent, and like to keep everyone informed on things. I haven't seen a whole lot of press releases really in the last several months. And I'm pretty sure crime didn't go away, but then again, I don't know. You know, I want to talk about that in a little okay. bit. Anyway, so this weekend was my daughter's, my our oldest child, Grace. It was her, uh, well, actually, it's her birthday today, so happy birthday, Grace. She's 24 today, but we did the birthday party for her here at the house. She came up from Menominee. She and her husband, Tanner, and her two kids, my two grandkids, they came up Sunday with a whole bunch of other people. So, uh, I mean, like mom and dad and my brother and my other daughter and stuff, so... That was great. I think I even had a yep. Yeah, so there's Grace on the on the left there. Was she and her husband uh, Tanner? And you know, I still can't get into those nose ring things. I'm sorry. <laughs> I know that's what all the girls are wearing, but I just can't. Nope. Sorry. I don't know. Do you, any of your kids have nose rings? Uh, no. No. Yeah, that's weird. I'm not, I'm not a fan either. <laughs> I mean, I think it's just because we're old. Yeah, yeah I think it is. And then Grandma and Grandpa, of course, with yeah. I guess we have to. <laughs> <laughs> but no, that's uh, but yeah, happy birthday to Grace, and that was pretty much it. A lot of sports uh, this weekend. I think our pick when we did uh, you had asked last week if the Lakers are going to make the playoffs or not, and we both said no. Well, we'll still see. Yeah, because they're they're doing okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I didn't watch much sports, so I was. Yeah, you were gone. The weather was bad coming home. Um, 
I needed Dirk's forecast. To see when did you, when did you come home? Sunday night. After oh, you were right in the middle of it then. Oh yeah, it was great. It was a great drive home. So it took me an extra hour and a half to get home, but we made it. You got drive slow in the snow, you make it. Um, you know. When did you guys get home? Um, Sunday night at like two thirty in the morning. Oh, oh so <laughs> Monday morning. Well, it was really Monday morning. Yeah, it was. <sighs> you know, so but Fond du Lac to Rice Lakes a long ways, but we made it. Everything's good, and we're off to Chicago probably Thursday night. I don't know when. And now, does he just keep playing? Until, <laughs> well, until they lose. I mean, if they win this, they go somewhere else. I'm not sure where, but I mean, we weren't supposed to play this weekend. Yeah. So, <clears throat> I mean, it was Team Wisconsin is a very good hockey program. I mean, <clears throat> something we've been we were part of. He's friends with every one of those kids on that team. He's played with them for years, um, and to beat him was is pretty special. But Team Wisconsin won every other division: the 14s, the 15s, the 16s. Um, that move on to the central districts, and so it was. It's, yeah, it was, it was pretty special. It was pretty neat uh, to be part of. It was a year ago today, that <clears throat> Sunday, that the Rice Lake Warriors last year won the state tournament. I remember, right? So now he won. I mean, this is a state for Tier 1. It was a state tournament for Tier 1. You had to beat Milwaukee Admirals and the Team Wisconsin and the Madison Capitals are the only three Tier 1 teams in the state. So they play each other to move on to the Central Districts. I see. Illinois has something. Well, Missouri has something. And then all these states – meet together in the central and then these central teams move on one team moves on to the other regions there's three other regions so there's another contest i would guess next weekend so anyway it's kind of confusing but we'll figure it, it keeps, out you keep uh, winning what i'm hearing is if he keeps winning he keeps playing he For, keeps winning otherwise he'll be home to get a job and finish high school <laughs> <laughs> yeah so he'd probably he want to keep plan. winning yeah. yeah, he wants to keep winning. <laughs> All the kids do, so we don't have to go back to school. <laughs> yeah, uh, and good morning, uh, Rick and Alicia Stelling and Renee, <clears throat> of course. So I didn't have any press releases. We will next week, uh, or I'm sorry, you didn't send any press releases in the last week. I didn't have a story specifically about Barron County in crime and court. I will have at least one by next week. Um, is there any shout outs that you want to give before we move on? Any uh, for anything? Shout outs or announcements? Uh, what? I, you know, we might have, I don't know that we'll have a press release today. We had an incident on Thursday where, um, uh, a subject did about $10,000 in damage and stole the truck, uh, to several businesses. We are waiting for that to get charged. My understanding is it did get charged late yesterday. So we may have that this afternoon. Um, but we haven't had a lot of press releases and, and, um, and that it, I think it's just winter. I don't think it's anything specific. Yes. I still think there's crime out there. We're still arresting people. Um, but you know, we didn't have any, you know, if we look back at our stats, we didn't have any major cases in 2020, 23, or sorry, 22. Um, we're starting off very good in 23. We're, you know, th this is the third month now. So uh, we're doing good. You know, I'm keeping track of major incidents on the calendar in, in my office here. And, you know, we haven't had any big major cases, you know, there's been a couple high speed chases and, and a couple little things, but nothing major, which we'll take. I mean, that's good police work. Um, but I think we'll, you know, we'll get there. I mean, we're not, we still have drugs. We still have different things, but yeah. um, it's, it's a little slow. It, it ebbs and flows and, you know, we're ready for that. So. Um, oh, on your mom. Oh, thank no. you. See, oh, this is just wonderful. Don't go this into is great. that. No. <laughs> your mother is fantastic. Yeah, I know. <laughs> My favorite person. And it looks like yeah. Brian is going to be able to watch the show later. We'll miss you on the live version of this, Brian. And we had a uh, uh, good morning rod uh, watching on youtube so i want to get into uh, i want to circle back to that <clears throat> that okay. ten thousand dollars the thing you just talked about but i want to quickly give a shout out last thursday we had officer andy shoot i forgot right uh, uh was john, it Je john Drew. <clears throat> officer andy the rice lake police department school liaison officer your previous job or the job that you had mm -hmm. at one point in station across from the rice lake police department talking about truancy and the impacts and why that stuff is so important as in you know not to be truant um, so I just want to give a shout out to them for coming on. <clears throat> you know, they're both, that was the first time they were both on individually, much less, you know, together. And I totally get it. There are still people that it's, I don't want to do live. And, you know, what are the questions? And it's, I don't know. The little, <laughs> uh, my questions will come up from what we're talking about. And it's not for everybody. Uh, it, it may be easy sitting and watching it and, and criticizing, which I don't think really anybody does because they know we're just, you know, kind of screwing around, but yeah. trying to get information out and have a good time. Uh, but I want to give a shout out to them because that's, uh, you know, 
coming on and talking to... about that stuff, especially for the first time. I mean, this is, I think, like 129th or 130th the show. It's easy for us. Like we right. don't have to really have anything written down, and usually that's the way anyway, or how we do it anyway. But um, thank you for them for coming on. That's on our YouTube channel and on our Facebook page and on our website if people want to watch it. It was really interesting. I learned quite a bit. So I just want to yeah. give a shout-out to them. Yeah, truancy is a tough topic. <clears throat> it's an important topic. Um, but you can – you can beat the system on truancy if you really want to through homeschooling in Wisconsin. It's there's a lot of different options out there for parents that want to try to beat the system. And we in law enforcement have to play that game and it sucks. And, um, but our school liaison officers across the County do a good job. Uh, and, uh, yeah, Andy does a, a great job in Rice Lake and, and, uh, he's got a lot of help and all of our schools work really close together. And it's, it, it's nice. It's a, it's a great safe team. And, they're trying to keep our kids safe and trying to keep them in school. And that's what important. do you mean uh, beat the truancy? Well, I mean, if you're truant, you can just homeschool your kid. You can just pull your kids out of school and say they're homeschooled. Lots of parents have done that. Well, yeah, but that wouldn't be the reason because why would anybody want to well, do then that? Then because the kid isn't getting an education if, if it's well, just the only reason. Yeah, I, because parents are – different sometimes Parents, so. <laughs> different that's very nice they're different right mm. yeah, that's a politically that's what riot versus <laughs> we're getting sheriff Fitzgerald well, on the show this morning no more no longer fitzy yeah, yeah. this is a yeah different so. and you know it's a parent's choice it's fine right. it's, a, it's a parent's choice wisconsin has some i think loopholes in the law about truancy that because you can just homeschool your kid but it's and there is great homeschooling out there. I'm not saying if you're homeschooled, there is great homeschooling out there. It's the idea that these people that are doing it because their kid is truant. As you lose votes from every homeschooling parent in <laughs> right. Barron County, no homeschooling is fine. There is no. Jerusha was homeschooled. True people Look at her now. Homeschool their yeah. kids. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it's the people that use the system in the wrong way to say I'm going to homeschool my kid is wrong Just because, because it does. It gives homeschooling parents that really do it a bad rap because well, I homeschool my kid too. Well, that's not true. He just sits in the basement, and, you know, does what he wants. They just don't want to get their kid up for school. Sure. There's issues. Don't get me wrong. There's other issues that conflict. This is alcohol, drugs, different things like that, mental health, all these options. And that's why our schools have to add so many positions, um, whether it's a mental health counselor or it's a truancy people or it's, or it's the school officer or, you know, many different facets a school has to do all of these things now. Um, <clears throat> so, um, you know, schools are, I mean, it's tough. The superintendents have a, have a tough job because right now everybody, if one person questions something, you know, we, they have to answer to it. Well, just because one person doesn't like it, you know, sometimes we need to tell these people there's other school districts have a nice trip. Um, but you can't do that. You don't want to do that. You know, if you don't like, law enforcement in Barron County, you know, you can move to Chippewa County. I mean, you can't tell people that, but at some point, I think we might have to start saying that to people. And, you know, I've probably only said it once or twice in my career. I mean, cause you can't satisfy people. Sometimes people just can't be satisfied. So uh, our superintendents are in tough roles, um, but we have great superintendents around Northwest Wisconsin. I mean, I'm not just Rice Lake or not just Barron County, but you know, I know you work, you've had superintendents on in, in the Washburn County area and, mm -hmm. and they do a great job and they have a tough job. No kidding. I wouldn't want it, <clears throat> man. I'm having yeah. something in my throat. So I right now already have a couple of topics I want to talk to you about <clears throat> that I wrote down. Okay. Uh, yeah, let's get into those first. Uh, we'll uh, back in 15 seconds after a word from Spooner Health satisfaction surveys and in conversations with patients, they appreciate the fact that staff got to know them. Staff really took their preferences into account and they just feel grateful that they are being cared for as a person. To learn more about our services, visit SpoonerHealth.com. Do right. you need Spooner Health? Maybe we can get Mike Schaefer. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. We'll have Mike Schaefer on the show. We should get Mike on and talk about hockey some more. He knows you know, we haven't had Mike on in a while. Yeah, and he can but we see him every week car. on his uh, on the. Th I... <laughs> yeah, I know, but I miss him. <laughs> uh, okay, all right. Just to be clear, I do not, and um, I don't want him back <laughs> on. But okay, all right. I'll call and see if he can come on next week. Maybe you can take them next week off, and Mike and I'll just do the show. <laughs> Perfect. I'll just produce it from here and just make comments and put up horrible things yeah. while you guys are doing it. That's gonna be great. 
We're not um, afraid. So I want to circle back to the uh, – yeah, I agree with you, <laughs> Renee. Uh, I want to circle back. You said something about the $10,000 something damage. Where was this and what is this? You said there may be a press release coming out. In the event that right. there isn't, I want to know more about this. Okay. Um, well, that involves our friend Dave Wilson. Who oh. I'm glad he's not on the show today because we'd be <laughs> – We'd be at odds. So this incident started up in another county. Unnamed. Well, I'm going to guess county. Washburn if it's regarding <laughs> Dave Wilson. I'm just guessing here. <laughs> An unnamed county. Okay. I won't beat him up too bad. <laughs> all right. And um, ultimately, this person magically appeared in Barron County. We'll just put it that way. <laughs> and ultimately, had some issues at a local gas station and left walking throughout the night then did some damage to some area businesses broke some windows stole the car wrecked a display broke into a building um ultimately was arrested by sheriff's deputies here in Barron county <clears throat> there's either some mental health or some drug issues going on ultimately was charged yesterday i don't know what with because it was late in the day yesterday um and uh, is receiving some help um that that we can offer and we're working on so um but there was a lot of damage done uh, to area businesses here in barron county um by this person and um that or allegedly i suppose we have to say because he was just charged sure. um and um so but we made an arrest we caught we returned everything people are cleaned up their mess but last friday morning i went around a couple of businesses and and she skipped some businesses and kept going. There's some businesses just on the outskirts of, of Rice Lake that are in Barron County that she did damage to uh, by just breaking windows. And not for any reason that I know of. I think it was just, mm. I don't know what, anger, mental health, drugs, sure. alcohol. I'm not sure, sure. Sure. So that person was charged yesterday, I would assume, with criminal damage to property or multiple counts of criminal damage to property. Um, probably auto theft, maybe a burglary. I'm not 100% sure. Um Auto we were thief. working on some of that. So it was a, a, a big deal um, for us. And, and I was going to put a press release out, but I wasn't sure what the charges were going to be. Um, and then there's some other factors in there that we can't talk about. Um, but the person is receiving help. And okay. I did get bonded out yesterday on a signature bond. And again, I think that's where bail reform on April 4th comes into play. And I think I'm going to keep mentioning that until April 4th. Um, because I think it's that important to for the safety of the community again to to make sure that the judges have more options so make sure you go out and vote april 4th for bail reform what well, now hold on i thought okay. the i thought the april 4th the the question that's going to be in the ballot for everyone that's going to vote is going to be about cash bonds well, is it thing. also signature bonds or is that no, universal I think this person, I don't believe, and I don't know this, this person doesn't have a criminal record. I don't think, I think they've, if they did, they've made it to all their court appearance, but I don't believe based on the age of the person um, who was 19, um, mm. that there isn't, there wasn't any previous incidents. So I don't think, I think that's where cash bond could have played a role into this. Sure. I think this is a, another good example of where a cash bond was maybe, I'm not saying a million dollar cash bond, but maybe a five hundred or thousand dollar cash bond to say, hey, you can't come into Barron County and, and do X thousands of dollars in damage and just walk away with a signature bond. I don't care if it's your first offense. My job as judge and DA and sheriff is to protect the citizens of Barron County and the property of Barron County. I don't always think it we always sometimes think about just people and I think property. A lot of businesses had to take time out of their day and their employees day and clean up and it costs them money. And I have no idea if they'll get their restitution or not from this. I don't know this background of this female. I don't know if she has money, if she's got a job, mm -hmm. I don't know any of that. So, um, but based on what I know, I don't see them getting a check tomorrow for their windows. And so uh, I think, you know, there was a church damage, like several businesses, I, you know, I, I don't know the totals, but I would guess windows aren't cheap today. And there was glass doors and front doors and windows and, you know, multiple windows were broken. So I think that's where cash, back to our bail question, I think that's where cash bail would have and could have been said, you know what, you just can't come to Barron County. You don't have any ties to Barron County. 
I want to make sure you're going to come back here for court. So you're going to pay cash to get out and I'll give you your 500 or thousand dollars when you come back to Barron County and you answer for your plea, you get found guilty or not guilty. You'll get your money back. So what it- ultimately what we can use that money for then if she does pay that and get out is now we have a thousand dollars towards restitution ready. I'm going to take that bond and give it to these people instead of waiting for restitution at $32 a month. So I think we could take that thousand dollars and put it towards the restitution and they'll get something up front. So, and and no, so what did this, how did this, uh, if you do a press release, I'm sure more information will be in there or it'll kind of make sense. That's pretty much the whole story. But what was the, if this just happened in Barron County, okay. But I think it started off with, it was something in another County. So does that have any ties to what it was this, or is that something? Well, all right, we probably shouldn't go into that. I have no idea. It well, started no, in another what, county. What did they steal a vehicle in another county and then end up no, there? No. She, they got in. She did something in in Washburn County and got arrested for it and oh. was booked and released in the jail, and then ultimately brought down to Barron County, magically teleported here, and left at a gas station. And, and there's there's some backstory to that. Okay, she said somebody was going to come and pick her up. That was a lie. There's no way that we know that as law enforcement. So while I love to ding Dave Wilson, it's not, you know, it's just, that just happens. I mean, I mean, if you, she got booked and released. And so, yeah, she caused a problem up there, got released, got brought down here, got arrested. And now is I see through these issues. So, <clears throat> and so yes, out of curiosity, when, the, when these things happen, and I'm not looking for like a blame thing at all, I'm really not. Mm-hmm. But is this something where you look at, where did this originally start in? Could we have stopped something from happening later? Had we done something then? And if so, what would that have been? Would it have been uh, identify, hey, maybe this person shouldn't be released right now, or maybe it's we don't have a choice. Our policy is the book and then release. There is no an original court date. There is no bond thing yet. It's just, is it discretion for a sheriff's office? Is there something you look back at now and that will kind of put a bow on it with this? That if it, maybe we addressed it at the very beginning, it would not have led to what it led to. Well, yeah, but that's like Monday morning quarterback and the, the sure. Packers, you know? Sure. So, yes, sure. I mean, well, if Aaron Rodgers would have waited three more seconds, that receiver would have been open, you know? Yeah. So, yes, there is things that we can do. We always try to do the least restrictive. I mean, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to – and you give people, especially a 19-year-old person, you give some benefit of the doubt, say, hey, you made a mistake – move on from here. Hey, if you, my grandma will come and get me, if you can get me to Rice Lake and, or whatever the story was. So there's things you can do. There's things that you can hold people for court with a bond and maybe she would have paid it. I don't know. So yes, there's, you can dance the dance, but we could do that with every case. You, we can't or it could have been be released, driven down to Baron. Grandma's going to pick her up and grandma did pick her up and she went home so, and everything's fine. 100%. You don't really know. I mean, right. isn't this really kind of what we also have been asking for from our cops, right? It's not just the tickets. It's not ju- just ha- you're a human being, too, and, and help someone, a citizen. Right. And if you can, you do. And sometimes uh, maybe you look back and go, well, that didn't work out the way I was hoping for. But uh, hopefully that doesn't make you jaded or, or, or prevent you from wanting to help out another person in the future. Because I think that is right or wrong, good or bad. That is what we are asking more from our law enforcement to do is be more a part of that community and have those relationships from a human perspective. Right. I I agree, but it doesn't make you, it makes you more guarded. I don't know that chief Wilson will like, Oh, I don't want to, you know, and, and again, Dave and I had a conversation about it and we joked about it and we laughed and I would have liked to have heard that call. Yeah. That would have been great. (laughs) So, I mean, and it wasn't all him. I mean, there the jail's involved. There's other things, and so oh, right. you know, it's just something. It, it, I'm sure we've. Done, I've been on the receiving end of that call too. It's yeah. what we need to do better. Law enforcement needs to work together, but you can't get jaded, and that's where, as administrators, we have to take that into the role and say, no, just because you're mad doesn't mean we're not going to do anything, or just because we you are been in trouble before doesn't mean you're not a victim. You know, we as administrators have to make sure that doesn't happen. Just like we have to make sure your rights aren't violated and, and things like that. So hundred percent behind, you know, that happens and we can't predict the future. Otherwise we'd be 
geniuses and well you know. uh mr uh, so tom mackey who's our uh, washburn county board chair for a number of years it, it he was he had passed away last week uh and you know i was thinking about him and then and then it reminds me of like the dave wilson's or like the tracy finch or yourself or just people that are in those positions where for not a lot of people really want those jobs mm-hmm. but I was just about to say, like, even like the Romaine Quins, but boy, as soon as you start getting the legislators now, everyone is like, well, no, I don't agree with you on that one now. So maybe we'll leave out legislators, even though they're elected. Um, Is It's like most people are doing it and they're trying to do what they think is the best thing to do at the time. And you're right. You can look back later and go, you know what? I don't think we should have done that one thing. But they're doing what they think is best for the betterment of whomever their constituents are. If it's a county board chair, as it was for Mr. Mackey, then it was for Washburn County. It, doing what you feel is right. You're going to make mistakes and you're going to do something that other people aren't going to agree with, but you know they're, they're not like purposely going, <laughs> watch this. I'm going to make this decision and oh, it's going to be awesome. It's going to be epic. It's going to be a dumpster right. fire. No, that's not how it goes. Yeah. So, and speaking of, I think Dave... Jeepers. I'm gonna, my, my triangle belt is going to be worn out by the end of the show. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think he's now actually the next board chair, right? Isn't that how it works? For you know, it's I, a. I, I, I believe so, and uh, you know, our thoughts and prayers are with the Mackey family yeah, and, no and everything that they did, and and now, yeah, Dave gets thrown in probably to that role, or I assume gets elected, or however. no, I think how it works, it's like the president thing, where it's just a succession. So the the board chair, if no longer able to do that job, retires or in this uh, unfortunately passes away. Then the first vice chair, which that's Dave, goes there. Then the second vice chair becomes the first vice chair. Like everybody just moves up one. And then next year they'll do the elections because it's already too late right now. So it's either next year or the next time that they're open for a seat. But I believe just next year. So, no, I don't think there's a vote at all. There has to be a succession in their laws. So I mean, Dave technically has been probably the board chair since Mr. Mackey unfortunately passed away because there needs to be one. So I believe that's Good. how it goes. I can write a letter to yeah. Now, oh man, it's going to be great. And we're never going to have this problem again in Washburn County. <laughs> so <It is. laughs> we're going to have to get him on now because we're going to have a whole to, bunch of stuff. I'm going to have to buy some property so I can vote and write letters up in Washburn. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to buy a sliver of land so I can have a vote in Washburn County. Yeah. <laughs> hey, uh, on that, uh, so I've asked a few politicians this, or uh, mm-hmm. uh, uh, people running for because you're technically a politician, but. Uh, running for legislature during last year's election cycle. How would you, now it's a little different for you because you're as a sheriff, your job is to you know, enforce laws. Right. But if, you know, 90% of, if, if somehow you knew and there was a poll and in Barron County, 90% of the people uh, polled said, we don't want to see speeding tickets on a certain road for anything less than 10 miles an hour. And there was like a vote and all this stuff. Mm-hmm. What do you do if that's what you're because you're there to represent, right? We're not a democracy. We're a republic. We, we, we vote people in to do these things. Uh, but if you know 90 percent, like these are people also are voters. They're not going to vote for your next election. So assuming that somebody would run against you. Right. <laughs> so what do you do? Where's that fine line? Do you stick with? No, this is what I think is right. And maybe it uh, could be specifically law. That's an easy thing to fall back on. Well, the law says so. Therefore, duh. But if there are things that that have a little more nuance to them, where you disagree with it, but everybody wants it, what do you do? Well, first of all, I think it, it would be great if I could figure out 90% of the people wanted it some way or the other. <clears throat> and I'll give you a perfect example, because I think it's a law. It's very tough to say. I can always fall back on it's the law. I, I And I, not that I want to talk about it, but I think the mask mandate was something that was that, you know, some people wanted it this way and some people wanted you to do it this way. And some people wanted this. And what was the right answer? I don't know. And you, you hear a lot of times as a politician, you have to sit back in your chair and, and think about it and really think you hear from the loud people you hear, but there's more than that. So you've got to have, and that's why I believe, or the way I do it, whether right or wrong, I'm connected in the community sit on a lot of different boards. I go on this show. I do radio. I do other programs to try to reach certain people. And I make myself available 24 seven to people so they can complain. They can tell me I'm doing a good job or they can tell me their opinion. Not something that's fun always in politics, but something that I, I enjoy. It, does it get to me? Yeah. We've both of us have had conversations off the air about people 
saying this and doing this and whether they don't like the media or they don't like cops or they don't think we should have done this. But you have, I wish there was a way to figure out 90% of the people want it because then you could lean that way. That'd be easier. But, yeah, but the the mask mandate was a perfect example yeah. about that. I mean, and the loud people aren't always the majority. And I think that's the one thing I learned through COVID is just because you're loud doesn't mean you're the majority. Um, or right, I mean, by the way, we should point yeah, that out. Yeah, or right, right. <laughs> and I'm not saying either way. And right, you know, I. It think doesn't mean like are, just understand. It's your opinion and your view. It doesn't mean you're right. It doesn't mean the other side's right either. But just because right. you're loudest doesn't by default mean you're right. Exactly, and that's what I learned through this. Just because, because I, I fall into that very easily sometimes, and and you have to catch yourself, and you have to have a good team behind you. I have a great chief deputy and captain. You know, whether it's my wife, my dad, you, whoever we can, and people in the community, you have to fall back on people that you trust that are going to give you good guidance saying, well, that's not the, that's not the super majority. That's not it. And, you know, you're right. The Dave Armstrongs and Romaine Quinns of the world, they have it a lot worse than I do yeah. because they have to make these laws. I just enforce the law. I'm like, if you want to change, go tell the, you know, Romaine to change the law and I'll happy to enforce it. You know, um, when it gets into these rules and these opinions and these, you know, and, you know, race and color and sex and origins and all this stuff is going on right now. And I don't have to have a role in that. That is nice. I, I'm just yeah, saying I mean, for a person that gets elected, you don't really have to address any of those because it's right. almost zero bearing on your ability to do your job or what your view is, is irrelevant because it doesn't, it, that doesn't, it's not applicable. And sometimes I inject my view, um, maybe places I shouldn't, but I also believe that I'm a, I care about Barron County. I'm a leader in this community. I, I care about the people. I think I do what's right, even, you know, if it doesn't benefit my department or something like that. So, uh, um, so I think I've earned and I get to have some say in some of that. It doesn't mean that my opinion stands and people have to listen to it, but, um, so I think we need to step up a little bit more. Even the quiet majority needs to step up a little bit more um, and and not let the loud people think that that's the way that everyone believes. And we need to hear from our leaders in mm-hmm. all walks of our county or counties. That We do need to hear from them. Because even though that your uh, view or if you wanted to share something, on a topic that has really nothing to do or has or any impact on law enforcement. But it's still, I think, important. I've always felt that way, that leaders need to actually, you know, lead. Right. And like, I don't care what our president's doing, to be honest. Like when Trump was doing that, I mean, that's a whole other thing. Or if Biden's doing that, like, I don't care. I don't take my cues from, you know, my president. I need them to do other things. Um, but locally, yeah, I want to hear from our sheriffs and our chiefs and our business owners and our board chairs and our DAs and our judge. I want to hear from these people. And I think other people do, too. Right. Um, I think. Yeah. And I think our, our chambers are good. I think we need chambers. To another good one. Our chambers are really good. I mean, I sit on the chamber board in Rice Lake. I think Fingers. they've also now said, hey, we can have an opinion on some of this. And we write letters to the city council on certain topics. Nice. And and this. And so. Hang on, my phone's ringing. I can hear. <laughs> you can tell, yeah. and so, um, so that's the so just two things, and then I want to get to something else. Um, but I think our chambers, our businesses, they do a lot, and I think there's they their opinion should matter and and have some weight bearing, and I think they do a lot. But let's go to Freedom Fest. Did you see the new thing that we can maybe get tickets for? That Freedom Fest has got a, a mm. new elite. I'm working Beer on garden. it. I'm working on it. Okay, good. I'm working. On it. I see they released that yesterday, so I would think that Freedom Fest will let us roam around a little bit more yeah. this year. Yeah, I think so. I'm working on. It. I'm giving them more and more deals. Like, okay, <laughs> how about those tickets look really nice right now? So hopefully we'll have some more information about that next week They'll as well. They got a two, t- and you can buy tickets. So I now's your chance. Like to right get now, out you there literally can. They sell out. Yeah, those things are going to go stupid fast. They Last are, year they we are, had yeah. the VIP. We went as the VIP, but now there's like another level above it. And it's like I'm sorry, what now? <laughs> uh, yes, please. Yes. So I didn't see it until late last night, and I, I forgot to check this morning because. Yeah. So if your friends, your businesses, I mean, 
this is the real deal. They're they're really stepping their game up. I, and I can't wait. This is this is this is this is fun, man. Three bands, one night. You don't have to. It's not a three day thing. It's a one day done. I mean, it's it's the it's it's the future. I think they they're ahead of the curve on this one, and I, think I agree. They're doing the right thing. I mean, they're not yeah. stretching this out over four days and trying to find volunteers for four days. They're like, give us one day, and we're giving all the money back to the community. I'm like, well, that's what people want. More people will give if they know it's going right back into your yeah. community. Yeah. It's now not they're taking last something. year and just making it even better. And last year was great. But oh. this year, and you know, you'd think it would just be like, man, maybe a little bit better. It's going to be way better. So no. I, I bet I, you their garbage is way picked up. Way their garbage. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hopefully people remember that from last yeah. year. That's right. <clears throat> on and why, uh, uh, Adam, let's get Stuart in on this conversation. I'm sure he's not busy. Or do- oh, oops. I probably should have put that screen. Sorry. <laughs> I think he's referring to the sheriff here in Wadsworth County. Yeah. Um, uh, no, I- I'm going to say no comment. I've gotten in trouble before. So. Right. And, <clears throat> but Dave and I had a great talk about it, and that's who it involved. Uh, the two people had the to pop, talk about it, so. Oh, well, I'm like actually, someone... uh, loud and shows up to council meetings. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I Is agree, that... Shaz. We, you got to be informed. You got to be an informed voter in today's world. Just because you're, um, just because you're at an attended meeting and you're, you know, I know who she's talking about. And, oh, man, now I know, really want to know. You're gonna have to tell yeah, me. Later. It's not, <laughs> everything's not a conspiracy out there i mean everything there's good there's bad i'm not saying city councils county boards sheriffs legislatures don't make mistakes i'm not saying that no one is perfect right. out there and we all need to work together and that's why city councils and county boards have 29 members and 27 members and which are too big i mean you say the same thing about washburn washburn is 21 that's stupid we have 29 you have 29 and you're, and you're three times the size of us. We have tw- that, so that is the dumbest thing. But nobody's going right. to vote you know, to remove one of their jobs. So, But no, we need right. 11. Tops 15. But 21, yeah. that's ridiculous. Yeah, I can't believe you have 21. And you said that's that the stupid. other day. 20, we only have 29. And we're, again, three times the size. Of us. I know. We don't, and I think uh, we have a lot. <clears throat> it's tough to please 29 people. But when you get down to a vote and 27 of them vote for it, it makes you feel good. I mean, it's like, well, Ooh, I must true. be doing something right or 29 vote for you, um, you know, but it's 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 and and when you join city councils and county boards, I think you learn a lot. A lot of people join for a issue, sidewalks or this issue or law enforcement or human services or DHS or whatever mm-hmm. it is. And when they get on, they're like, whoa, this is this is way different. I, I love when people get in and we've had several people that got on because of DHS and they've learned a lot. I've come to respect them. Um, and they were loud and, 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 you know, not the majority and they joined and, and won and that's great. Not a lot of people want these positions either. Yeah. Back to your original question. Yeah. Not many people want it. Yeah. Um, and well, Kirk Anderson, him. our friend Kirk Anderson is now the mayor and he's mm-hmm. a firefighter. Um, he started on city council yeah. and that, that really got his you know passion for a lot of this. And now he's a mayor and I think he is an apps. Well, I'm wildly biased on this. Like sometimes right. I'll say I'm not actually biased at all. I can actually, you know, see two different <laughs> things and separate it. But in this one, I'm not like, I'm really good friends with Kirk. I don't think I'd be able to see it for what it was, but I do believe still I, that he's a really good mayor. He's exceptionally active and engaged and involved just as much. As I think Dave will be uh, a Washburn right. County would is it's they're fortunate it's unfortunate that Mr. Mackey's passing the county board chair, right. <clears throat> but uh, trying to find something positive to come out of that in terms of at least the county here is it's nice to be able to know that Dave is going to be the one also a friend. So I'm sure I'm biased on that too, but that person is, uh, you know, Dave, he's, he's very active and engaged and involved and he cares. Not a lot of people would want that job anyway, but it isn't just about drawing short straws. Or whoever draws the shortest draw, it's he's actually going. He's going to be good. So yeah, that's nice he to does. hear. Yeah, and what, so, whatever he does. So. except when he comes on our show, he's terrible guest. He's an absolute terrible guest. <laughs> Bet you didn't hear it at all. Yeah, I'm reading Dirk's forecast. Uh, he's, don't yeah, you agree? I, I said he's a he was a, oh, a terrible guest when he's on. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> he just you know sits down in the corner and. <clears throat> I'll bypass that. It was no. Um, yeah. Oh, good for you, Shasta. There you go. 
I would encourage anyone to get in that city council. That's where it's at. That's even more than the county city council. That's where it's She's at. Already get involved. Starting. That's how you do it too. This is free advertising. She didn't pay a dime for that. We should build Dang it. I need to take this a, a ban from page. There we go. I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, sure. No kidding. Good job. Uh, uh, congratulations, Shasta. I don't know that much about you, but the fact that you're getting involved like that, that's awesome. You said you read Dirk's forecast. What do we have coming up? Uh, it's going to snow. <laughs> that's all you need Thanks, to say, sir. Dirk. <laughs> more snow. Oh, uh, it's more Thursday the night. next few days. Enjoy the sun. Um, yeah, late Thursday night. I'm going to try to get out of town before then because Dirk told me I should. So I'm going to. And uh, But he's spot on. So Always. whatever he says is is great so yeah his worth yeah 100 uh, agree daylight saving time is starts this wait starts or finish no starts uh this sunday are you a fan hour extra uh, in the morning or hour so this will give us an hour extra at night right, so uh, are then, you a fan of that do you like more an hour extra in the morning of sunlight or an hour extra at night well we'll have the we'll have the morning very shortly and now it'll be <clears throat> it'll be Darker in the morning for a little bit longer, you know, but we'll get in April. It'll be, it'll be fine. So I'm which do, okay. which would you prefer? I would prefer the night. Yeah. I don't wake up like you do. But. Yeah. That's why I don't like it. I like the morning. Cause I get up at four and now it's going to be like three and a half hours. The sun comes up. <laughs> it's gonna, <laughs> ugh. So but by, the end of, by April 1st, the sun will be up by six thirty, So we'll be fine. All right. Hey, uh, Aaron Rodgers, where is he going to land? Is, I should say this. He's, uh, which do you take? Well, He's running out of spots to go. It's pretty much just the right. Jets. There's only one. one team left. It's the Jets. He's either going to the Jets or staying a Packer. Or well, retire. or he could retire. So which one? Could, which three is the most likely? He's going to the. He's not going to be a Packer. So the Jets is the only team left. Everybody else signed quarterbacks yesterday. So the Jets are yeah. sitting without a quarterback, and I don't know what they do if they don't get him. Well, they have. No, well, they have their first round draft pick still going in. The, but why would he want to go? I don't know. I don't know either. I don't I'd know. go somewhere warm if I could pick it. <laughs> are, do you think the Packers fans? So I'm not a Packers fan. Uh, are Packers fans just losing? Is he losing? Uh, not credibility. Uh, what's the word? Favor. Is at this point even Packer fans are going? Just well, get out of here. We don't even want you here anymore. I mean, you you need to make sure that we all know that you love everything about Green Bay and the Packers I, and we the fans. And if not, then get out of here. Like this is not the first time around. Are even Packers fans starting to go? I don't even care. Just go. I think you pay him 150 million bucks, and he's like, "I'm not sure I want to do this anymore," you know, or whatever, or just leave, or you know, in the Packers, and it probably did Aaron Rodgers' defense, and sure, it's administration saying, you know, you know, they probably playing a game too. I don't know. No, he's a know, prima donna. I've never liked that it's, dude. It's like he's got a. If you're getting paid 150 million bucks from whatever, you shut up. You're, you, yeah, yeah you <laughs> just go to work. Green and gold every day. You don't need, you know. You don't need the summers off or whatever. So, oh, I agree. It is embarrassing. Like, I, I don't know who's advising him, but he needs to fire that person because his the optics of it, right? This is just like your Q score and you know your PR stuff, man. Uh, it's ridiculous. But I, I oh, hold on a, a second. We go back to the supervisors. We uh, have discussed cutting the number of supervisors on the Barron County Board, but the number of the committees. Oh, sure, sure. A lot of the committees. Well, okay. Here's an easy answer for that. You don't need that many freaking committees. You really could oh. pack some of those together. You could, you could pack some could. together. I, I, I'll agree with Bill on this one. Okay. I would. Um, we have a lot of committees, but we just don't have a committee just to, you know, you know, a you committee about committees. Services, law enforcement, and they don't meet without having a reason to meet. But Bill's right. You, okay. I just Bill. think it's a lot, but he's he's got a point there, and and no one wants to do it, and no one's going to do it for a part time wage. So no, I get it. it. And so, that well, is if a you good cut point. down on the number of supervisors, you know, now you take that same money and now everybody's getting, uh, you know, pay raises. Yeah, but you got to go to double committee meetings and that's, they're tough to do. And it's tough to get non retired people to do it because the committees meet during the day because that's when business is operating. So, is this the Bill in Fitzy show now or something? You're supposed to be yeah, taking but... my side on this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm going with Bill on this one. All he's, right. He's, checking, he's on the county board. So, Oh, okay. Well, then I'll defer to him as well. Yeah, okay, he knows fine. what he's talking about. All so. right. All right, what do you have coming up this week? Uh, hockey. Hockey. <laughs> All right, so hockey this I weekend. Am, uh, I am going to Eau Claire on Thursday. Uh, the Red Cross is honoring um, that ice rescue from last year when our deputies yeah. went in the water. They're uh, they're honoring both our deputies for saving the guy and the two guys that saved our deputies. Um, so they're honoring right. uh, honoring them. The Red Cross is doing that Thursday. Yeah. 
<clears throat> so I'm sure there'll be some kind of media on that on Thursday. Um, so I am going to that on Thursday. Um, so you have to you have to put your uniform back on. You have to, have to wash yeah. it. See, I was yeah. gonna say you got to make sure that your wife watches it, but that would be sexist. So I didn't <laughs> say that. So That's maybe right. you wash the clothes, which is perfectly fine. I do. See, I, I, I do all. Of, I do everything. I wouldn't know the first thing. <laughs> No, I, I know I know how to wash it, but it, they would all turn out different colors or something. I'm sure I could figure it out. I've done it before. Ah, I don't know. I don't I have Jerusha to snow them. blow and mow the lawn. So that's just how it works. She does that, and I do this, and it's fine. I'm sure she could figure out how to mow the lawn, but she just doesn't want to, which is perfect. I don't want to wash clothes. All right. We're well, going to start getting in trouble here real fast. Day. It's Ben Day, so you don't have to do anything. It's Ben Day today. It's National <laughs> Ben Day. So if you know a Ben, say Happy National Ben Day. All right, that's all I got, man. We'll see you. Uh, that's all I do. What? Next week, huh? All right. Yeah. All right, cool. For Baron County Sheriff Chris Fitzgerald, I'm Ben Dryden, and you've been watching Positive Tuesday with Ben and Fitzy, presented by Professional Exteriors and Interiors. Thank you, Amanda. Yay. With nearly 20 years. It's like, I feel like I've earned something, but I haven't. I just found out randomly this morning that it is technically National Ben's Day. With nearly 20 years of experience, this locally owned and operated business has provided quality work both on the inside and on the outside of your home or business. So, get, oh, we got to get Pete on. I forgot. That's who we, sh we should have had him on, dog. I got to start reading comments. I got to get through this. Uh, so give him a call today, 715-520-2271. I'll see you uh, this Thursday when uh, Congressman Tom Tiffany will be back for our monthly Breakfast with Tiffany show. Fitz and I will be back here next week when uh, Mike Schaefer now will be joining us for the show. And then the week after that, Pete, write it down. Whatever the Tuesday is, two weeks from today, or three weeks today, either two or three weeks, check your calendar. Pete Johnson is going to be our guest on one of those two, uh, one of those two days. All right, so okay. until next week, thanks, everyone, for watching. And as always, have a blessed day.